Also, also uh, some snails can uh, can act as a, a vector, right? So they are also within this in invertebrate vector category. The vertebrate category, the different uh, mice, different rats, bats, they are the examples of uh, vertebrate type uh, uh, vectors, right? So vectors can be divided into invertebrate type and vertebrate type. Invertebrate type, mostly the arthropods. And uh, uh, and others being the snails, and in the vertebrate category we have the rodent that is uh, different rats, different mice, bats. They are the examples of vertebrate uh, arthropod, mm -hmm. vertebrate vector. And vectors are living organism transmitting the infection from man to man or animal to man. Right. So next one is uh, depending on the transmission chain. That is. Uh, that is uh, that is uh, the uh, that is organism or organism involved in the transmission chain. Hmm. So we know the vectors are transmitting infection from man to man or to man, right? Uh, if if uh, uh, if the vector borne disease is uh, mm, transmitted from man to man. By 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 an arthropod, it is uh, uh, it is the uh, it is one of the one of the uh, types, right? Another one could be uh, man from man to snail to man, right? So man to arthropod to man, man to snail to man. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm planning to uh, send or to show you one video okay of on these uh, mode of transmission okay let me uh, discuss it first so uh, the first one can be mm, the man to uh, man to uh, uh, man transmission by uh, uh, the intermediate being an arthropod or a snail sometimes uh, sometimes uh, uh, what happens uh, we know that Vector can transmit infection from man to man or animal to man. When it is transmitted from animal by the arthropod to man, this is another another type of transmission chain. The first type was man to man by an arthropod or a snail. Next one is uh, another another uh, vertebr another vertebrate reservoir that is uh, animal to man, right? It can be from any mammal or it can be from bird. So mammal, arthropod, uh, man or bird, arthropod, man. 
you know the example of plague you have heard of it uh, we know the organism very well um, from microbiology so when plague is transmitted from mammals to man by arthropod this is the example of uh, animal to man transmission right so first one was man to man in between one uh, invertebrate Uh, vector second one was animal to man in between one invertebrate vector third one is there is uh, of course a uh, 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 man to man transmission but there are, there are two two uh, intermediate uh, living organisms in the first and second category first category was man to man there was one uh, intermediate uh, living organism second one was animal to man there was one intermediate organism and the third one was man to man but two intermediate organism right so uh, 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 if we it, that intermediate organism could be uh, could be uh, there is a creature we will be discussing later that is called uh, cyclops okay so this is one this is one of the examples of arthropod so if cyclops and fish uh, involved as two uh, intermediate living organisms this is this can be the example of the third category of uh, a transmission chain okay uh so the first category is man to man in between one living organism the second category was animal to man Uh, again there is one uh, living organism in between or intermediate uh, living organism third one is man to man with two living organisms right so this is a classification of uh, a vector borne disease by the transmission chain the third way of classifying these uh, vector borne diseases is the method adopted by the vector to transmit the infection we know mosquitoes bite okay mosquitoes bite uh mosquitoes bite or mosquitoes uh, suck uh, but blood is not the meal right this is only for development of their eggs right that's why only female mosquito bites that's why only female mosquito bites not the male mosquito the fo mos food for the mosquito is mainly the uh, mainly the um, mainly the leaves okay the fluid obtained from the lips but blood is for their ov position mainly the development of eggs so this is the mode is how do they transmit the infection by biting or by biting of course this is sucking of blood this is biting or it can be uh, uh, can be by uh, can be by regurgitation of some regurgitation by the insect of some infectious materials right uh it also can be by scratching it also can be by uh, scratching okay or these these uh, vectors can transmit infection by contaminating the uh, host's food fluid okay so how do they transmit infection this is the third way of classifying the uh, vector borne diseases that is how do they transmit the infection or the method adopted by the vector to transmit the infection it can be biting it can be regurgitation it can be by uh, scratching or it can be by uh, uh, by by just simply transferring the or uh, transferring the vehicle right so this is the third way of classifying vector borne diseases and the fourth way of classifying vector borne diseases this is very very important that is the status of the disease agent or the status of the pathogenic agent within the vector what happens to the pathogenic agent within the vector or uh, the the changes occurring within the pathogen of the pathogenic agent within the vector so that is the fourth way of classifying the vector borne diseases so uh, uh, depending on these the vector of uh, the 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 one is the mechanical transmission that is an other one following the biological transmission okay so uh, vector borne diseases uh, Or transmitted by only mechanical transmission, or that mechanical transmission occurring within the vector, or biological transmission occurring within the vector. So, what happens in uh, mechanical transmission? In mechanical transmission, uh, 
as name suggests there is uh, no change no change of the pathogenic agent is occurring within the vector not even its number so there is no development no change in number of the vector within the no change in number of the pathogenic agent within the vector so patho there is no development or there is no multiplication of the pathogenic agent within the vector so this is they are simply transmitting the infection mechanically right so uh, here the uh, uh, think about uh, uh, think about uh, the the, the uh, flying arthropod like the flies think about the crawling arthropod your 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 uh, uh, your um, your uh, ear ticks mites okay so crawling arthropod what happens they are fit usually arthropod means with a joint leg okay so they are uh, they are they are fit uh, they are fit to get uh, soiled by the uh, by the pathogenic organism or uh, their any other body part can get soiled by this pathogenic organism and uh, they do transmit the infection okay uh, right and uh, another thing is the the pathogenic organism might uh, uh, might uh, might get into the uh, elementary tract of the vector but no change is occurring so this is just passively excreted by the vector that is also an example of mechanical transmission right so pathogenic organism uh the the feet of the vector or the wings of the vector the proboscis that is the sucking uh, sucking body part of the vector can get uh, soiled by this pathogenic organism or it enter the pathogenic organism might enter into the gastrointestinal tract of the uh, of the vector and just passively excre excreted by the vector no change of the pathogenic organism is occurring within the vector itself then only it can be called as mechanical transmission right but the next one is biological transmission as name suggests again it is it, the infectious agent is not being transmitted mechanically by the vector it, it is the, uh, either uh, either uh, development or multiplication or both so either development or multiplication or both is occurring within the vector of the pathogenic organism is occurring within the vector right multiplication might happen development uh, can happen or both can happen within the vector right so depending on that these biological transmission it comes as short note right this biological transmission can be classified sub categorized again into propagative type of biological transmission cyclopropagative type of blood uh, uh, of, of of biological transmission and cyclo developmental type of biological transmission so first one is propagative type of biological transmission cyclo propagative type of biological transmission and the third one is cyclo developmental type of uh, biological transmission propagative only multiplication propagative means only multiplication right cyclo propagative means both change in form and multiplication right and cyclo developmental means only development no multiplication right i repeat so propagative means propagation only multiplication uh, 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 only multiplication of the pathogenic organism is occurring within the vector but there is no change in the form of the pathogenic organism right what happens in cyclo propagative type of biological transmission in the cyclo propagative type both change in the form and change in the number that is multiplication of the pathogenic organism are occurring within the vector right in the cyclo developmental type of biological transmission only development is occurring so propagative cyclo propagative cyclo, uh, cyclo developmental propagative cyclo propagative cyclo developmental right propagative only multiplication cyclo propagative both multiplication and development and cyclo development of only development no multiplication right but the examples are important these are often asked in the exam and also it is important for your theory paper right so uh, example of example of uh, propagative uh, uh, 
you know that when you know the uh, bacilli very well that is uh, plagued bacilli what is the bacilli for plague the plague do you remember the bacilli for plague anyone sorry uh, bacteriology yeah. pardon so your seniors very good very good very very good so it is it is it is uh, what happens there is uh, there is propagation occurring of the propagation of pathology agent is occurring within the vector that means only multiplication there is no change in the form the example is because you have to give example of the vector and the pathogenic organism both susceptible host only vector and the pathogenic organism i repeat vector any living organism that can transmit infection any living organism that can transmit infection from man to man or from animal to human being because uh, because in 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 uh, in our medicine we will be always focusing on humans in veterinarian they might be focus of course they will be focusing on the animals so our focus is on human so will be our vectors would be vectors transmitting infection from man to man or from animals to uh, man right so uh, uh, when mechanical when uh, sorry biological transmission propagative type of biological transmission is occurring within the vector there is only multiplication and the example is plague bacilli in rat flea we'll be discussing about all these uh, separately right all these all these vectors arthropods the the most important category of vector uh, is the arthropod right so one of the examples is this flea flea f l e a flea right i will show you the uh, the video of these also i will try to show okay that would be interesting uh, so uh, uh, plague bacilli in rat flea is an example of propagative type of um, biological transmission is occurring within the vector itself right next one is cyclopropagative cyclopropagative means both multiplication and development right what is the example the most important example is malaria malaria parasite you know all those four types okay very well so malaria par parasite within what type of mosquito we know mosquito is is transmitting here the mosquito is a vector of malaria uh, the anopheline group of mosquito right anopheline because mosquitoes can be classified as anopheline and thulicin these anopheline mosquitoes are responsible for these uh, malaria right so vector of malaria is anopheline it's a tricky question right usually uh, all uh, most of the cases females are the biters right so female female arthropods are the biters mostly mainly mosquitoes so anopheline mosquito they do transmit these uh, malaria and the pathogenic organism that is uh, those uh, 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 plasmodium that is uh, uh, what happens both uh, developmental changes occurring a developmental changes are multiplication occurring within the vector that is mosquito that's why it is called the cyclopropagative type of biological transmission right uh just to remember p for p propagative and propagative plague very easy to remember uh, and uh, just uh, think of your own mnemonic cyclopropagative cp and okay and then is uh, cyclo developmental only development as name suggests only development is occurring within the vector and uh, example is yes uh, uh, microfilaria you have heard of uh, this one that is filariasis okay uh, 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 in your in your uh, parasitology uh, uh, usheria bank of t uh, so so microfilaria in mosquito it is a culicin group of mosquito mainly so uh, this is this can be an example of cyclo developmental type of biological transmission so if we think of the uh, status of uh, uh, pathogenic organism within the vector we can classify these diseases or the mode of transmission into mechanical transmission biological transmission biological transmission again into uh, propagative cyclo propagative and cyclo developmental right uh we only what in relation to this we will be discussing uh, just 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 will be recapitulating two terms again one is uh, one is your uh, trans ovarian transmission trans ovarian transmission or trans ovarial transmission 
ट्रांस ओवारियल राइट ओ वी ए आर आई ए एल ओ वी ए आर आई ए एल सो ट्रांस ओवेरियल ट्रांसमिशन एंड ट्रांसटेडियल ट्रांसमिशन राइट ट्रांसटेडियल एस टी ए डी आई ए एल ट्रांसटेडियल ट्रांसमिशन राइट ट्रांस ओवेरियल ट्रांसमिशन मीन्स वेन the infectious agent it you can you it it you can take the example of uh, example of uh, transplacental transmission of human being right so when the infectious agent of course we have been talking about vector will be uh, this is restricted to the vectors only when the infectious agent is or the pathogenic agent is 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 transmitted transmitted uh, from the uh, from the uh, uh, infected female to to her uh, progeny okay progeny that is in, uh, infected female vector to uh, progeny it is called trans ovarial transmission right trans ovarial transmission so or uh, when uh, transmission of inf- you know uh, these arthropods are insects uh, they they have different phases in their life uh, that like your uh, pupa there is uh, a larva right and the adult egg okay so mainly these are the four phases in the life cycle of these arthropods so when Trans, uh, disease agent is uh, transmitted from one stage of life to the next uh, this is called transstadial transmission so when disease agent uh, is transmitted from one stage of life uh, cycle to another uh, this is known as uh, uh, transstadial transmission it can be from larva to adult okay or uh, when it is transmitted from the adult female Uh, arthropod to its progeny it is called transovarial so two terms are there in relation to vector borne transmission of disease one is transovarial transmission and transstadial transmission right um we discuss about the epidemiological characteristics of uh, of vehicle borne transmission right that is uh, uh, that is uh, if 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 a dose is heavy uh, the outbreak might occur like all this uh, vector borne disease Uh, transmission depends on some factors also these are not ex- uh, you can uh, mention them as characteristics but these are the determinant these are the factors determining the the vector borne disease okay and those were the characteristics of uh, vehicle borne diseases um so vector borne disease de- uh, depends on um uh, feeding preferences of the vector of course uh next is uh, the next is there uh, the, that is uh, 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 um, infectivity of the vector right right infectivity uh, of the vector means uh, their their ability to transmit the uh, ability to transmit the uh, pathogenic agent right infectivity of the vector that is uh, survival of the vector another another factor right and 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 uh, another is the domesticity of the vector right because uh, because you know Uh, some vectors they do prefer to uh, uh, to to prefer the indoor compared to the outdoor and some do prefer the outdoor some of the mosquitoes are uh, indoor with indoor preference some of with outdoor preferences they are that's why they are called endophilic okay and exophilic those who have philia for the outside they are called exophilic and though do prefer indoor they are called endophilic right so depending on the domesticity some are uh, in the some do prefer the field area some do prefer domestic and peri domestic area so domesticity of the arthropod is also important in disease transmission and there are some environmental factors of course the season the rain the humidity the temperature all these are important de- de- uh, determinants of these vector borne diseases right so um, uh because uh, 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 mostly when we think about the vectors not the other invert uh, vertebrate uh, uh, vectors when we think of arthropod vectors they are usually the cold blooded creatures right Arthropo- arthropod vectors and are cold blooded and 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 uh, as they are cold blooded they are sensitive to uh, cl- different climatic factors right a different weather related factors weather influences their survival of and 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 their reproduction so whether influences the survival and reproduction that's why it is very much related to the uh, meteorologic conditions right uh, that's why uh, we know that malaria dengue occurring at a particular period of time or uh, they are, they have got a seasonal trend right 
So uh, uh, this is about the vector borne disease. We discussed about the fomite borne diseases. We discussed about the vehicle borne diseases. We discussed about the airborne diseases. We'll be discussing airborne again. Okay, this is very very important uh, in relation to our COVID nineteen. Next is our um, vector borne diseases, and last but of course not the least, as per part classification, that is unclean hands and fingers. This is a separate class, separate category of. Uh, indirect transmission uh, uh we know we know hands fingers uh, fingers they are the because there there were five apps one of them was fingers hands are the most uh, most uh, most common medium uh, by which pathogenic agents are transmitted because if we think of fomite usually uh, we do touch the fomite then we touch our uh, our mucous membrane or skin and the disease agent get transmitted very easily so unclean hand and finger we can touch our we can touch our uh, 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 any any uh, eyes you can touch our nose okay so disease agents are usually uh, easily transmitted from the surface to the or any other vehicle from the um, to our to the to our body uh, 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 the thing is yes uh, so what is the measure we have to 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 uh, to avoid these mode of transmission the measure we have to this way of this mode of transmission what is the measure we know or we all know this very very well what is the measure we have to avoid these mode of transmission this mode of indirect transmission that is unclean hand and fingers what is the mode what is the method or what is the way we have to avoid this transmission what is that particular uh, practice you all the hand washing hand washing yes the hand washing hand washing with soap and water hand washing for certain period of time hand washing following all those steps right mere use mere mere use of uh, mere washing of hands is not enough mere use of soap and water is not enough uh so you have to follow all those steps you have to use soap or uh, soap and water both or you can use if soap and water not available remember if soap and water is not available then only you can use this sanitizer so called alcohol based hand sanitizers right so hand washing is one of the methods right to avoid uh transmission of infection right to get uh uh, uh protected hmm, this is very 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 extremely important very easy method to adopt but very often neglected even by medical personnel right make it a make make it a have it make it a, make it make it a point right to wash your hands thoroughly uh, following all those six steps we'll be discussing later about the six steps of hand washing right so this uh, just to just to recapitulate ekjon bole de what are the different uh, what are the different modes of transmission tar pore amra second uh, second aspect uh, third link e jabo that is the susceptible host first link was the reservoir or source second link was the mode of transmission and third link was the susceptible host thik ache so please tell me uh, the the different modes we have in the disease transmission what are the different uh, how can we classify them Uh, the more different modes to action ball. Can you say Drumbo Banerjee? Okay, can you say this ball? Yes, sir. Ball. Act to classify, cat categorize, score the mode of transmission. Sir, direct mode, indirect mode. Excellent. Start for. Sir, airborne transmission. ये तो कोठाएँ बोल चुकी हैं डायरेक्ट और इनडायरेक्ट सर इनडायरेक्ट इनडायरेक्ट वी हैव इनडायरेक्ट वी हैव फाइव कैटेगरीज इनडायरेक्ट आल्सो वी हैव फाइव कैटेगरीज सो व्हाट आर द व्हाट आर द वेज ऑफ इनडायरेक्ट ट्रांसमिशन सर इनडायरेक्ट ट्रांसमिशन इज दैट फाइव एयरबोन देन एयरबोन देन सो दैट फिंगर फूड फ्लुइड्स फोमाइट्स फ्लाइज ओके ओके बट दैट इज दैट इज द दैट इज द दैट कैन बी टेकन एज द निमोनिक ओके but uh, but 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 uh, five apps but uh, uh, but uh, theoretically okay one is airborne all the other other uh, modes sir other uh, vector borne then then clean hands 
unclean hands and fingers of course then the uh, porous non porous what was that porous surface non porous surface sir for my bone for my bone very good and and if so we bad. think of fluid milk and all this this is the example of what vehicle 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 bone transmission right yes sir. air bone vector bone unclean hand and finger fomite and vehicle bone and what about direct transmission what are the different modes under direct transmission the direct contact yes very good direct contact so droplet then, infection yes excellent droplet infection then so contact with soil okay contact with soil as per park okay then vertical mode yes vertical transmission then another one is inoculation into if, skin if, okay infectious agent if it is directly inoculated into the skin right that is a another mode of direct transmission the 5 plus 5 okay next is next chain uh, next link in the chain of transmission is our susceptible host right susceptible host uh, so there are few terms which are related to this susceptible host right what are those one is the incubation period one is incubation period next one is successful parasitism one is incubation period next one is successful parasitism third one is serial interval fourth one is generation time they are uh, to some extent uh, uh, to some extent related uh, uh, communicable period right and very very important term that is secondary attack rate that famous ro right you have come across this term ro isn't it have you heard the term ro yes sir okay very good so we will be discussing all these in relation to susceptible host first okay then other 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 aspects uh the thing is uh, to our 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 ultimate target is to Uh, to uh, to stop the transmission so what we have to do then uh, so, so we have to do something with the reservoir the source of infection we have to enclose the reservoir isn't it uh, uh, then we have to break the mode of transmission right we have to break the mode of transmission and we have to protect the host so these are the three uh, three measures we need to adopt to uh, stop transmission of infection or communicable disease uh okay so uh, susceptible host the terms which are important i repeat incubation period uh, generation time serial interval uh, there is successful parasitism there is there is there is uh, secondary attack rate and 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 there is there is there is communicable period right so uh, susceptible host the third link in the chain of transmission is uh, the first term can be can be the can be the successful parasitism successful parasitism basically basically the things uh, things required for the pathogenic organism uh, for transmission of infection right like these are the these are the requirements for the pathogenic organism for transmission of transmission of infection so these are the requirements of the pathogenic organism for the transmission of infection so what are those requirements number one is portal of entry portal of entry that means uh, the point uh, the point by which uh, by which the pathogenic organism enter the host so it it must be having its uh, it must be having uh, an appropriate portal of entry okay uh, portal of entry uh, portal of entry can be your uh, respiratory tract can be your elementary tract can be can be can be can be your genitourinary tract 
can be can be eyes can be nose can be uh, your 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 skin also right so these are the different portal of uh, dif- examples of different portal of entry so it must be having an appropriate portal of entry right obviously if 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 portal of entry it must be having its portal of exit also right a uh, portal of entry why required uh, it is required again for the transmission of infection in 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 a, a, um, to uh, it is required to reach a new host for its sustenance right to, for the propagation of uh, propagation of uh, the species of uh, pathogenic organism this portal of exit is also required right Uh, so again your respiratory tract your alimentary tract your skin your eyes can be the portal of exit of infection right uh next uh, next is must be requiring it's uh, so portal of entry portal of exit next is the site of election right site of election so uh, it must be having uh, um, it it must be having Uh, a, a optimum place right so it must be having a particular site with optimum condition for its uh, for its survival and for its multiplication so this this site of election is also required for successful parasitism along with portal of entry and portal of exit okay uh another another thing that is required is uh, its 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 ability to survive outside human body okay so it must be uh, having the uh, capacity to survive for a sufficient period of time till it get uh, a new host okay so organism must be having this ability to uh, survive outside human host for sufficient period of time okay so uh, so um, so what are the requirements of uh, requirements of an organism for the successful parasitism it must be having its portal of uh, entry it must be having its portal of exit it must be having an appropriate site that is called the site of election and it also must be uh, it should be able to survive outside human body for 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 a certain period of time for sufficient period of time to 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 um, uh, to uh, to be transmitted to the next host okay so uh, these are the these are the these are the factors so these are the requirements of uh, requirements of the pathogenic organism right next term is incubation period you have sorry i think most of you have heard this term that is incubation period what is incubation period this is a period this is a time gap okay so time gap between what entry and appearance of clinical signs and symptoms right so time gap between entry of the pathogenic organism within the within the susceptible host and appearance of signs and symptoms this is the incubation period the this is agent is incu this is agent is incubating during this period of time so what is incubation period the time interval between the time interval between invasion okay invasion by the by the organism by the pathogenic agent or the infectious agent and the time between time gap between or the time elapsed between the invasion by the disease agent and uh, the first appearance of uh, sign or symptom you know what is sign what is symptom what is sign what is symptom so symptom is what the patient complains of and sign is, is what we listen dhruv jyoti dhruv dhruv banerji who is this sir shoujo dipto shoujo dipto bol sir symptom is what the patient complains of and very uh, symptom is what the patient what complains of right elicit. what is sign so it's what we elicit as a clinician excellent what elicited by the healthcare worker all our health care workers starting from doctor the nurses the paramedical staff uh, our other support staff all the healthcare worker right so uh, something elicited by the healthcare worker is your sign okay so appearance of sign and symptom at a particular point uh, at a particular point another first point was entry or the invasion of the organism invasion by the organism so the time gap between these two is called the incubation period so what happens during incubation period during incubation period the infectious agent um, uh, of course uh, uh, it, it undergoes multiplication within the host it can be the arthropod also like vector also so it, during the incubation period this is agent uh, undergoes multiplication it can undergo development also uh, so uh, so 
So incubation period is the time gap between entry to appearance of sign and symptom. Uh, in relation to incubation period, a uh, very, very, very commonly used term is median incubation period. You have come across these term median. Median is basically one of the measures of central tendencies or averages, right? You have heard of these term uh, mean, median, mode, Shunichisto. Most of you have heard. Uh, Taina, median, mean, median, mode? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. So we do use the term mean because uh, they are all examples of, they are all measures of central tendency or they are all examples of averages. But depending on situation, right, uh, we do use uh, mean, we do use median, we do use mode, right? Applicability is very important. So here for the incubation period, we use the average, we, what average we do use is the median, right? So median incubation period is a commonly used term. Uh, this is this this means the time required the time required for fifty percent of the cases uh, to to uh, to show the sign and symptoms. Okay, so time required for the fifty percent of cases to uh, to 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 occur following invasion of the organism. Okay, so this is fifty percent of the cases uh, occurring within this. Uh, likely to occur within this time period that is the median incubation period okay uh, there are several factors which determine the incubation period of the disease that we'll be discussing uh, uh, later okay uh, uh, then is then they are then uh, uh, then an important question is uh, in relation to incubation period is 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 this the the importance of this incubation period importance of incubation period so uh, why incubation period is needed okay uh, incubation period is needed to to uh, to find out the source of infection okay incubation period is needed to know the source of infection uh, because when a disease is with a very short incubation period uh, uh, it can be few hours uh, it can be few days. Uh, uh, it is. It is. It is. It is relatively easy to uh, to to uh, to track the source of infection compared to a disease with very long incubation period, right? Because here, uh, here the movement of the affected individual is important. So to find out the source of infection, a uh, disease with short incubation period uh, will uh, will. Uh, um, Will, it, it is very easy for a disease with a very short incubation period. Okay, so incubation period is very important to find out the source of infection. Uh, incubation period is very important as you as you all have the all, all, as you all have heard the term quarantine. Okay, quarantine and isolation. These two terms are very uh, commonly used term nowadays. So for these uh, for these quarantine. Okay, for this quarantine. Uh, this is important, this incubation period, because quarantine is uh, segregation of the segregation of the exposed indi individual. Remember, for quarantine, the person uh, may not be infected, may or may not be infected, right? But he is exposed. An exposed individual who is, who is may or may not be infected, he is segregated from others for a certain period of time. What is that period? That is equivalent to the maximum incubation period of the disease. Okay, this is quarantine, and this activity is under the surveillance activity. Okay, uh, surveillance is basically in uh, we know about the uh, CCTV. Okay, uh, closed circuit TVs. Uh, so uh, uh, this is also one of the surveillance measures, social surveillance measures. So, in a disease surveillance measure, this is uh, what is what is uh, what is uh, uh, what are the different activities that are carried out in disease surveillance measure. Basically, this continuous surveillance is continuous scrutiny of all the factors determining the disease. Continuous scrutiny of all the factors determining the disease. So, uh, for actually, the purpose of disease surveillance is 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 to uh, control the infection, right? Uh, so, combat it. So. Uh, one of the disease surveillance measures is this quarantine measures. We want to uh, uh, we want to segregate the exposed individual who may or may not be infected to 
to reduce the spread of infection from him. Okay, that's why we do uh, isolate. We don't use the term isolation, but we do isolate him. Okay, so that's why it is called that uh, home quarantine. Okay, or particular quarantine center. So this surveillance activity is also uh, uh, is, uh, uh, related to the incubation period. So incubation period is also important to determine the period of uh, quarantine period of surveillance. Okay. Uh, uh, next is uh, the 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 incubation period is also important to uh, to uh, uh, to as we have already uh, described that uh, the. Uh, Incubation period is important to find out the source of infection. If we think of a point source epidemic, right? Point source epidemic means uh, each and everyone is acquiring the infection from a particular source. Think of a fuchka kawa, right? All the students, uh, the students uh, having fuchka from a particular fuchka wala, and he is a point source, right? A particular, a single source, right? And this incubation period is also helpful to find out the for a particular point in point source epidemic because uh, all the cases will be occurring within one incubation period in case of point source epidemic all the cases will be occurring within within uh, one incubation period uh, thus incubation period thus incubation period helps us to find out the point source in case of point source epidemic another important important uh, uh, um, important aspect of this uh, incubation period is 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 uh, help us to adopt some uh, prophylactic measure. Okay, it helps us to adopt some prophylactic measure. We know prophylaxis can be adopted by taking some drugs. Prophylaxis can be adopted by uh, taking some uh, active immunization uh, by vaccines, or prophylaxis can be. Uh, can be uh, adopted by uh, taking some passive immunization measures or immunoglobulin antisera, right? So, this incubation period help us to uh, uh, this uh, dif incubation period, different incubation period of the of the disease. Uh, depending on the incubation period, we can adopt this uh, uh, particular measure, that is personal prophylactic measure, okay? So, these are the advantages of this incubation period. Another, another term that is, which is not related to the communicable disease, which is related to uh, the, rather those non-communicable disease, that is latent period, right? A latent period is almost equivalent to incubation period of communicable disease. It is applicable for the non-communicable disease. And this is basically, uh, basically the period, the gap between a disease initiation and disease detection, right? Disease initiation and disease detection. A disease can be detected by sign. A disease can be detected by its symptom, or disease can be detected by some laboratory measure in 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 in, in without uh, without uh, without having sign and symptom, right? So latent period is period uh, the time gap between disease initiation and disease detection. It is uh, it is it is not exactly incubation period. It is a term. Uh, it is the term like that of incubation period applicable for non-communicable diseases, right? Uh, so this is the incubation period. And another, another. So incubation period important one is your a mm, mm, number one is your source of uh, infection. Of course, the source in case of point source epidemic. It, your your prophylactic measure adoption of uh, prophylactic measure that can be uh, that can be adopted by uh, incubation period your quarantine measure can be uh, can be determined by this incubation period and and then of course yes 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 this is prognosis this is prognosis can be uh, uh, can be determined by this incubation period okay this is prognosis can be determined by this incubation period also we'll be discussing about this also so uh, just like a, a, a particular a particular disease with a very sh uh, a particular when a disease with a short incubation period, the uh, the prognosis can be worse, right? Or uh, if incubation period is uh, prolonged, the prognosis is not that uh, an issue, right? So, um, what are the what are the what are the imp what are the uh, important aspects of this incubation period? One is your uh, detection of source of infection. 
adoption of prophylactic measure, uh, determination of the uh, surveillance activity, and and a determination of the prognosis of the disease. All these can be uh, can be uh, assessed by incubation period, right? Uh, and uh, uh, okay. So in the uh, okay, my question. Last week's question that is difference between uh, infectious disease and communicable disease. Yes, you will. Infectious disease and communicable disease. You will be. JQ. Infectious diseases. You will see. Shoujo Dipto. Huh? No, sir, Nilarko. Oh, Nilarko, ball. Ball. Infectious yes. diseases yeah. essentially say Gulo, the Gulo con infective agent involved. Uh, Ketakunta? Uh, like Jacono bacteria. Kunta, 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 infectious diseases. Infectious and, disease, a con infectious agent involved. Are communicable and, diseases? Communicable disease, infectious disease, infectious agent involved, and they spread from one person to another. Like, 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 Person to person spread corona bullet, it's not communicable disease. The thing is, communicable disease is transmissible from person to person only. Taito? Yes, sir. And preferably by direct contact. Acha, Ami Tahale, no. Communicable disease is, remember, these two uh, aspects are very, very, the two, two definitions are very, very, descriptions are very, very important. So, as per Nilarko, communicable diseases are uh, are transmitted from man to man only, not from animal to man or environment to man. We are focusing on man only, uh, human being only. Taito, Nilarko, communicable diseases are transmitted from man to man only, not from animal to man or environment to man. Taito, Nilarko, to kotha unujai? Tor kotha unujai, communicable disease is, can only be transmitted from man to man. If it is transmitted from animal to man or from environment to man, it cannot be considered as a communicable disease. Edo kum ki? Edo kum ki? Haan, sir. Eir febari ke ke ache? Who are in favor of these... Uh, who are against this or <laughs> motion or <laughs> in favor of this motion? Communicable disease. Sir, infectious disease one infectious agent involved. No, now, now we are talking about communicable disease. My question is. Sir, communicable or, the infectious disease are present. No, communicable disease is can only be transmitted from man to man. Eta ki agree kodish na kodish na. No, Corina. Can you? Communicate is important to check on animal. Yes, from environment to man or from animal to man. Animal to man. Okay. Or in any any direction. I'm not focused on man. Okay, so a meal is caused by, of course, a specific infectious agent. Or at important jeta, that is, or by its toxic products, specific infectious agent or its toxic product. Into infectious disease, an infection is a must. Infectious disease, in fact, it aidu to make it very clear. Okay, infectious disease, an infection is a must. If if a disease caused by in next class, you have to give the example. You have to give the example because you have you have gone through your microbiology. Amar example ta lagbe. Amra bolchi infectious disease and infection is a must, right? Mm -hmm. If 
a disease is caused by toxic product by tox toxin of the organism if the disease is caused by toxic product of an organism can it be called uh, 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 an infectious disease toxic product of an organism can it be called an infectious disease no sir communicable disease kintu porishkar bolche it can be caused by an infectious agent or its toxic product right infectious disease hole irrespective of the source of infection there should be one infection right an infection is a must in case of infectious disease the hale entry of toxic agent of the infectious agent so nc not agent infection uh, entry of toxic product of the infectious agent can it be an infection so next is what is infection right ei tinte point very clear amake next day khub clear kore bolte hobe so what is infectious disease what is communicable disease what are the characteristics what are the characteristics of infectious disease what are the characteristics of communicable disease each and every word any possible in between words of this description uh, 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 very very important so right? from each and every word is very important so we have to go through the uh, descriptions from park very very well if possible kono net search kora infection infectious disease and communicable disease ami ache kintu assign korbo shobai porbe ami ami kauke kauke jigesha korbo ওই রল নাম্বার টেন টোয়েন্টি থার্টি ফর্টি ফিফটি এদের হান্ড্রেড হান্ড্রেড টেন সো কমিউনিকেবল ডিজিজ ইনফেকশাস ডিজিজ রাইট আগেইন রইল কারণ এটা ক্লিয়ার হয়নি এখনো ওকে ঠিক আছে এক্সকিউজ মি স্যার আই জাস্ট ওয়ান্টেড টু আস সো দ্যাট হু ইজ দিস কেস স্যার আই এম শাগুফতা Yes. Uh, so, so it, this means that uh, in this criteria, if we uh, uh, like uh, we cannot classify like a uh, botulinum toxin as an infectious disease, but rather a communicable disease since it's a toxin produced. So, when the disease is occurring by the toxin, that is botulinum toxin by uh, by the organism, like the, toxic the toxic product of the clostridium botulinum, isn't it? Yes. So, for in infection what is required for infection what is required for infection like the presence of the pathogen totally presence entry entry and development or multiplication not mere entry not mere entry it is entry or development or multiplication no so it is entry and development or multiplication okay okay, okay. so what are the required characteristics entry class development slash multiplication right so these two okay are hmm. required for and
Okay. Who is next? One to ten. Well, number seven. Seven. One seven. Then. Hello. Yes, sir. Who is next? One seven. Then. One and seven. Okay. Then eleven.